Hello everybody, welcome to Sapphire Falcon and this episode of my playthrough of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, we've kind of been exploring around the southern part of the middle area of Tsushima Island. Um, we've been doing some main stories, like we went to Umi Umugi Cove where we got Goro the Sailor to send a message to the Shogun on the mainland. Uh, we've also been clearing some farms because the Mongols have taken all of the farms in retaliation for our activities. Uh, and we've been doing a bunch of side quests and just general exploration. So uh, let's see what we want to do now, okay? So yeah, we came up here uh, to Akashima Village. And it looks like there's a bunch of things there. There's two gifts available and upgraded the bowyer, four at the trapper and one at the armorer. Uh, we kind of explored this corner a bunch, and then we kind of came over here to Umugi Cove. And there's a um, bunch of epic quests, a bunch of main stories, a bunch of side quests. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to Akashima Village, get the gifts, and then see what kind of upgrades I want to do. Thank you, again. The Guiding Wind is currently set to uh, undiscovered Sashimono banners. Shino, you made it here safely. <laughs> there were no demons on the road. Kappa or otherwise. My aunt's teaching me to treat the wounded. Your father would be proud. Uh, that's the woman who believed that Kappa uh, took her father. We found it wasn't Kappa, it was just bandits. So yeah, first stop is of course going to be the gift altar. Because that will get me resources which I can use to buy other upgrades. But it looks like this monk wants to talk to me first. I think the Mongols are afraid of our hot springs, Lord Sakai. They avoid them. Hmm. Perhaps they don't like the smell of sulfur. Or they're afraid taking a bath will make them sick. Let's hope they stay afraid, my lord. If any warrior is going to gain strength from Tsushima's hot springs, it should be you. I can't argue with that. Interesting conversation. Normally when you talk to one of these um, people in the main hub town, they give you a quest, or they tell you about a rumored location. A brutal bandit for those who don't need to hide their past deeds. How does that look? Oh, white with a mysterious red splatter. <laughs> that would go well with the... Um, Headband of Death. This one, which is also white with mysterious red splatter. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that symbol on the front is the symbol for death, but I don't know for sure. I also have 20 linen, 20 iron, 20 bamboo, 100 supplies, and that looks like that's that. All right, so let's make sure. Uh, Swordsmith has no upgrades available. So first thing I'm going to upgrade or go to is the armorer. Hopefully it's not just Tadayori's armor because I don't use that. But we'll go to the armorer, uh, then the bowyer, then the trapper. Pretty sure this is the armorer here. Permit me to refine your armor, my lord. Yep. Do I have the protection you need? It is Tadairi's armor. Goodbye. So Bowyer next, who is down a level. No substitute for a great bow. How can I improve your bow? Looks like it's just the half bow that has an upgrade. 
and this is the top of the line half bow. Takes uh, 600 out of 727 supplies, 150 out of 443 bamboo, 75 out of 215 yew wood, and 4 out of 12 wax wood. Um, and it looks like damage gets a small increase, draw speed gets a moderate increase, stability gets a moderate increase, and reload speed gets a moderate increase. So all in all, just makes it better. A bow without equal. You lack the required materials. Very sorry. For the longbow, I have everything except the supplies, because I need 800 supplies for that. May your aim be true. Alright, so Trapper is where? Do you need a swordsmith, my lord? No, I need a trapper. It would be nice if I could get a more detailed close-up map of a town so I knew where each merchant was without having to wander around and learn it like a normal person. I have goods of all kinds. Range capacity upgrades and quick fire capacity upgrades. So flaming arrows and black powder bombs. Uh, kunai and smoke bombs. Eh, sure, let's do the smoke bomb upgrade. It'll go from 2 to 3, costs 20 out of my 30 predator hides. An excellent choice. Because it's, of those, it's the one I actually sometimes use. Until we next meet, my lord. Alright, so with all of that done, let's see, what do we want to do? We can probably clear one or both of these encampments, actually. So let's first fast travel to the Stonemire Lookout, and then from there we'll head to the Dark Water Encampment. Hundred and thirty meters this way. 130 meters isn't worth calling Kage over. Might even be that group of yurts there. Yep, it is. Uh, bonuses assassinate enemies from above without being seen. Three of them. And the firefly tells me there's somebody nearby. Or, an, sorry, an artifact nearby. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change to my Ronin attire. Just because avoiding detection is going to be the name of the game here. The trickiest part of this is going to be the whole from above part. This guy seems like a good first candidate. see the leader over there behind the burned down house. So let's bring this uh, this guy over here so we can assassinate him. Be 
because with him being behind this yurt, again, made him a good assassination target. Also seems like he's really the only person who comes and looks this way. I don't know if I can jump on top of a yurt or not, so let's find out. Turns out that I can. Excellent. It looks like there's a straw hat Ronin there with that Mongol, because yeah, they are now part of the enemy group. Where's he going? It looks like while I did alert those two other guys, I didn't alert anybody else, so that actually ended up working out really well. So I've now cleared this whole half of the uh, encampment. So I've learned all of the stances, but I don't know if I can still observe Mongol leaders. No, it's just giving me the option for critical strike. All right. One straw hat Ronan kept almost seeing me, so. Oh, and here's a Mongol artifact. 18 out of 50, it's a quiver. Quivers containing upwards of 60 arrows are equipped by a Mongol warrior both on their person as well as their mounts. Archers normally bring multiple bows into battle with them. Heavier variants are fa favored for dismounted use, while lighter bows are ideal for firing swiftly from horseback. Makes sense to me. Hmm. There's some grass here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lure the Straw Hat Ronin over here. What was that? I can deal with him one by one. So that way the leader doesn't see me assassinate him. I probably need to get, uh, oh, there's four people over here. Ah, well, let's just take out the leader and then kill the rest of them. This is what I trained for! trying to parry, and it didn't work. Yeah. The Straw Hat Ronin are definitely a more formidable, um, than the Mongols are. Uh, 
Ah, I missed the uh, red. I missed the red cross. Ah, dang it. It looks like they're all back, including the leader. All right, so I'm just going to skip past to the uh, point where I've got it cleared out like I had before, and I'll see you on the other side. So fortunately, it uh, carried over the fact that I had completed the bonus objective from before, which is nice. Obviously, I took a slightly different approach to it this time, pardon me. And... Poof! No undiscovered locations showing up there. So, let's head to Rebel's Retreat and take that one out. 320 meters, for that I'm going to want Kage. Someday we'll go for a peaceful ride. That would be nice. Probably that plume of uh, smoke there. I kind of figured these uh, stone formations would be, like, where it was. Uh, bonus, kill enemies with a half bow. Three of them. Alright, I can do that. Apparently going up there was not as sneaky as I thought it was. <laughs> oh geez, a whole bunch of archer's towers. Alright, well, as always we want to start at the top and work our way down. So, there's somebody way up over there. So let's go around and, uh, and get them. Ideally with not tipping off the actual guards. It's very conveniently um, a climbing log here. But it is too conspicuous at the moment. So, let's try this.
Yeah, this is the guard tower that I want to neutralize first. Oh geez, that was close. <laughs> Okay, look the other way again. Thank you. Yeah, I thought he was wearing a helmet. So the half bow wouldn't do much good there. It will work here. Another archer up here. I think that's the gonna be the last archer tower then. And he is definitely wearing a helmet, so let's use the longbow to take him out. You know there's a lot of force when like the guy like flies back a little bit. And this guy's a brute. I knew the half bow wouldn't do much to him. Not only a brute, but a brute wearing a hammer. Not a hammer, a helmet. Words, I can use them, really. I want to get this guy who's in amongst the horses, but I don't want to get the horse, obviously. got the leader's attention. Alright, well let's get this other guy who's not wearing a helmet. And let's uh, get everybody else. Fortunately, it wasn't particularly difficult to take this guy out, or this um, group out, once I had completed the bonus objective. The Straw Hat Ronin definitely seemed to be something that the game is using to step up the difficulty of, uh, of an encampment or territory. Hey, a Mongol artifact! Milk Rack. Since fermented milk products are a staple of the Mongol diet, soldiers travel with many utensils and materials for processing dairy cultures. Milk is traditionally prepared by cloth filtration, followed by, in, by storage in large open leather sack. The kukur. I'm probably saying that very wrong. 
Uh, these sacks are normally suspended near the entrance of a yurt, though sometimes they are also strapped up to the side of a horse's saddle, and thus agitated over the course of a day's riding. Which I could be wrong, but I think that's how you make yogurt. I didn't use any wind chimes, so I'm good there. And poof, there is an undiscovered location. We'll choose that as our next destination while I switch to the da, 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 traveler's attire because that will tell me if there's another artifact or anything nearby. There's no pulsing, so I'm assuming that means no. So let's head in the direction of this undiscovered location, see what it is. It's only 170 meters. This is apparently not the way to go. Rebels Last Stand. Probably where Lord Shimura uh, defeated them. I see a golden tree, maybe a fox den? Yep. Alright, lead the way, Kitsune. Show me where the Inari Shrine is. One more to earn the charm of silence. There's some Mongols down there. Is that the fort that we took? Yeah, that's the fort we took with uh, Lord Shimura. I know this episode's probably going to be a little bit short, but I'm going to call an end to the episode here. So you know the drill, click over there to join me next time. If you're enjoying this, you can click up there to subscribe. And up here is something that the algorithmic overlords at YouTube think that you'll enjoy for my channel. If it catches your fancy, go ahead and click on it. I'll see you next time.